from Humvees to Bradley fighting vehicles and tactical trucks, the U.S. military often uses the railroad to transport its vehicles and equipment across the country. But using steel wheels on steel rails during wartime and times of peace is nothing new. Military minds have come up with some pretty wild ways to utilize this form of transportation. Using trains in war dates back to the mid-1800s in Europe, but their worth was really proven during the American Civil War. Trains hauled troops, supplies, and equipment. Some railroad cars even served as weapons platforms. Of course, with railroads being heavily relied on by the North and South, sabotage became a tactic to fight the enemy. One of the most well-known stories in railroad history, the Great Locomotive Chase, played out during the Civil War. James J. Andrews and his raiders from the North stole an engine, the General, and tried to do as much damage as they could to the Western and Atlantic Rail Line running from Big Shanty, now Kennesaw, Georgia, to Chattanooga, Tennessee. They were pursued by Confederate forces who ultimately acquired this locomotive, the Texas. Andrews and his men were eventually stopped. Several of them were the first recipients of the Congressional Medal of Honor. As time marched on, the weapons of war got bigger and more powerful. Some of the most imposing military machines to ride on the rails were these huge pieces of artillery. Railway guns were used by both sides during the First and Second World Wars. This British railway howitzer, shown here in 1940, was manned by a crew of 50 men. Meanwhile, this captured footage shows one of the German guns firing at an unknown location during World War II. Some countries also developed armored trains. These are from World War I. They had no problem carrying heavy weapons and thick armor plating, but obviously their mobility was limited. This Polish armored train from World War II was destroyed by the Germans as they began their invasion. In the U.S. during the Second World War, troop trains transported soldiers and sailors around the country. And flat cars loaded with tanks and other pieces of equipment and supplies kept the war effort going. No doubt, the railroads were the backbone of offense, as this poster says. Fast forward to the end of the Cold War, and the U.S. would begin to develop trains that could carry and launch missiles. They could be moved around America's rail network and would hopefully be able to avoid Soviet detection. In December of 1986, the White House announced the research and development of specialized trains carrying Peacekeeper intercontinental ballistic missiles. This diagram shows how a train would be made up. According to the National Museum of the United States Air Force, 50 Peacekeeper missiles would be deployed on 25 USAF trains, with each train carrying two missiles. And here's the prototype launch car. It's currently on display at the National Museum of the United States Air Force. It's unclear if trains would be disguised as commercial rail cars, like in this artist's rendition. Ultimately, the Peacekeeper rail garrison system never became operational. With the Cold War over, the program was canceled in 1991. But military forces around the world still use trains to transport their vehicles, weapons, and supplies. This train, sitting at CSX's Halsey Yard in Atlanta in 2019, was hauling Bradley fighting vehicles and other equipment. Loading a train like this would be quite an undertaking, but these men are trained to do just that. Looks like some military vehicles were also customized to help them get the job done. This half-truck, half-locomotive was photographed at the Camp Carroll Railhead in Korea in 1998. The cargo on these trains is right there for everyone to see, but some military trains fly under the radar, so to speak. Here's a munitions train passing through Folkestone, Georgia. It really blends in with other trains on the rails. You can tell the military sees the value in using intermodal shipping containers to move its supplies. And as far as moving troops, well, planes have filled that role. I hope you've enjoyed this look at military trains, but we're only really scratching the surface here. One aspect of this topic that I didn't go into detail about is the U.S. Army's Transportation Corps, and also the military installations that actually have or had railroads on their property. This one is located at Fort Eustis in Virginia. Another interesting topic is the United States Military Railroad during the Civil War. It primarily repaired and operated captured Southern railroads. Here's one of its engines pulling Abraham Lincoln's presidential car. That coach would eventually be used during his funeral. I think an entire documentary could be made about the use of railroads by militaries around the world, but that's all I've got for now. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.